about geometry. So um, we're starting chapter four, which is all about transformations. A transformation is an operation that maps an original figure, which we call the pre-image, all right, the pre-image, onto a new figure called the image. All right, the new figure is called the image. Now that might seem a little confusing, but here's what I want you to think about. Um, when you are looking in a mirror, you are looking at your reflection, right? You are looking at your image, all right? That means you are the pre-image. What you're seeing in the mirror is your image. You are the pre-image. Uh, if you're more familiar with photography, for example, you might take a photo and then if you um, like make it smaller or turn it or anything like that, what you started with is the pre-image and then however you manipulate it, changing colors, however, that is your image, right? The final thing that you're left with is your image. So hopefully that kind of makes a little bit of sense. Um, in the graph on the left here, we have triangle ABC, um, and it is the pre-image, which means that this triangle right here, A prime, B prime, C prime, is the image. And that little tick mark, uh, apostrophe, uh, however you want to think of it, it's read as prime. So you could even have like an A double prime, B double prime, C double prime. That would just be called double prime. All right, so that little tick mark is your image. It indicates your image, and it's uh, the double prime. A transformation can change the orientation, all right, the position, and the size of a figure. It can change all three of those. A rigid motion transformation will not change the length or angle measures. All right, the length and angle measures will stay exactly the same. So what are the four types of transformations? Obviously, we're learning about translations today. The other three are reflections. Um, and a translation is when we take uh, something like that and we just move it. A uh, reflection is when we take our triangle here and we reflect it across a line. So that's like looking in the mirror, right? We mirror it, that's a reflection. A rotation is, and I will try to do it so that it's very obvious, is when it turns, kind of like that, right? It turns, that's a rotation. And the dilation is when we go from something being small to being big or vice versa. All right, that's a dilation. So those are the four types. Uh, translations we're going to get really, really familiar with, okay? Reflections we're going to look at a little bit, and then I want you to be able to identify rotations and dilations. All right, that's important that you can recognize that that's what happened. Um, because we're distance this year, we're not going to get super into them. So translations. Um, a translation vertically and or horizontally slides. Okay, that's the key word right there, slides every point of a figure the same distance and direction, all right? They slide the same distance and direction. So literally we are just taking it and sliding it, right? It slides, everything moves. In that figure, everything moves. So if we take a look over here, we've got triangle ABC and then we've got triangle A prime, B prime, C prime. We can see if we count here that we go one, two, three, four, five, six to the right. And then we go down one, two, three. Now that works out great for just saying what happened, right? The triangle went right six and down three. But that's not a very efficient way mathematically to show it. Um, and it doesn't really tell us what we did mathematically. So we start with a point x, y right? Any point. We could name one on here if we wanted to. But this is our pre-image point. And then we are doing something to it to get our image, right? The, the image from it. So in this case, we went right six. Well, right, is that in the positive or the negative direction? It's a positive. So we went plus six. The y down three. Another way of saying that would be, would be we went in the negative three direction. So that means if I take this point right here, which is at one, two, three, negative three, excuse me, uh, one, two, three, four. So it's at negative three, four. Um, I could add six to it and then subtract three from the Y and it should get me this point. So that means I should have negative three plus six and then four minus three. 
that should get this point down here. So let's just see. Well, negative 3 plus 6 is 3. And then 4 minus 3 is 1. Hey, look at this. 1, 2, 3, 1. That is the point of prime B. B prime, excuse me. So again, I want to remind you that ABC, triangle ABC, represents the pre-image. And then triangle A prime, B prime, C prime, which I forgot up here, um, represents the image. The image is the final, right? It's what you're left with, the final product or whatever. So let's go down here. Uh, this says to graph and label the triangle. I'm going to graph with you once. Okay, I'm going to graph with you once. And then I am going to uh, just have them pre-made for us. So we want to graph the point uh, D is at negative 1, positive 2. So here's D. Uh, and then E is at negative 4 and positive 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So that's E. And then F is at... 2, 1, 2, 3, 4, and that's F. Make sure when you are graphing these that you use a ruler, okay? Don't just eyeball it. Get out a straight edge. You can use many different things as a straight edge. It really is important. Makes it look nice, A, B. It makes it easier to see where your points are instead of having to be like, oh, I think it's that point. Because if you have a nice straight edge, you can tell exactly where they are. So there's my triangle. Um, D, E, F, and we want to graph its image after the translation. So we have X plus 5 and then Y minus 3. Now I know every point moves, but what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take my three points, move them, and then redraw it. So E needs to go right 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and then down 3, 1, 2, 3. So this is E prime right there. Um, and I can double check that because for E uh, prime, we would take negative 4 plus 5. Um, and then we would have 5 minus 3. So that means E prime should be at negative 4 plus 5 is 1. 5 minus 3 is 2. So this should be at 1, 2. And it is. So that's great. Uh, let's do it for D now. D goes right 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And then down 3, 1, 2, Three. So here's D prime. So D prime should be at negative 1 plus 5. And then 2 minus 3. So it should be at 4, negative 1 for D prime. Hey, look at that. 4, negative 1. So that works out great too. The last one, let's just try it with F by plugging in our X and Y here. And then let's see what comes out, right? And we'll see if we can figure out what F prime should be at. So it should be 2 plus 5. And then 4 minus 3. So F prime, 2 plus 5 is 7. 4 minus 3 is 1. So if I go right 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and then down 3, 1, 2, 3, sure enough, we get F prime is at 7, 1. Um, if it helps your brain, you are welcome to use different colors. So I'm going to switch in just a second. Uh, because sometimes it's nice to have the pre-image in one color and the image in another. So our pre-images will be in gray, and then I will try to use oof, so many pages, so little time, um, a pink for our image. Again, make sure you are using a ruler. I'm just trying to highlight it so you can see that that is the image. Now it's really, really important to that this little section right here, DE, that segment is congruent to D prime, E prime, all right? It's congruent. Um, you can count that if you want to. We can find the distance between those two points, but I want you to know when we talked up here about how the distance and direction, right? We travel everything the same distance and direction. That means this length and the angles are all the same. So highlight that, circle that, do something. That means E, segment EF is gonna be the same as segment E prime, F prime. And DF is the same as D prime, F prime. That means angle D right here, this angle is going to have the same measure as this angle, so as angle D prime. And angle E will have the same as angle E prime, which means angle F will have the same angle measure as angle F prime. All right, all of those are the same. All of those are the same. Um, 
So, oh, and I put those in, but up here. So D prime we said was at four, negative one. E prime we said was at one, two. And then F prime we said was at seven, one. And again, it's really important to show your work. All right, we did that right here. So show your work. All right, let's take a look at some more examples as they are upside down. There we go. So our first one up here, it says graph and label with the vertices. Um, quadrilateral, oh, rhombus, JKLM. Um, and it's image after the translation. So we are doing the translation x plus 2, y minus 2. So that means that I am going 2 to the right and then down 2. So this is j prime. Another way of saying that would be that we are taking negative 4, we are adding 2, and we are taking 6, and we are subtracting 2. So that means we should have 4, negative 4 plus 2 is negative 2, 6 minus 2 is 4. Hey, look at that, negative 2, 4. That is j prime. Uh, let's do k next. All right, k is at 0 and 8. We are doing 0 plus 2 and 8 minus 2. Well, 0 plus 2 is 2, 8 minus 2 is 6. So k prime should be at 2 and 6. So k prime. So we should have gone 2 to the right and down 2, which we did. That is k prime. Don't forget your prime. All right, same thing with m. So m prime is here at uh, negative 3, positive 1. Negative 3, positive 1. My bad. And then our last one is L prime. L prime is at positive 1, positive 2. There we go. Um, so there are a few more on this page. All right, I want you to try them out. Try them out. And now I'm going to slide so we can try four and five. All right, try four and five. All right, let's take a look at the answers, which are right here. I didn't draw them, but you can see them. All right, the next thing we want to look at uh, is identifying and writing a rule, all right? So we want to describe the translation. Um, and the easiest way to do this, I think, is to draw out how we move. So a uh, similar process to finding slope, where we want to talk about, you know, it, it, it's similar. I'm not going to say anything more than that case though because we have our x going first um, I'm gonna put x first as well so let's do purple for x and then we'll do green for y so if I'm starting here D is my pre-image that's where I'm starting D prime is our image so I need to move in that direction now we could just draw a line right but that doesn't tell us how we moved it doesn't tell us how we moved so I want to start here, and I'm going to go right one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I went right seven. So that means I'm starting with my x. Right is in which direction, positive or negative? Should be a positive. And we went seven. So now we can look at the y. For the y, am I going up or down? You go up. So up one, two, three, four. Well, is up in the positive or in the negative direction? It's in the positive direction, so we're adding four. Okay, so that's all we're doing with writing a rule. We're just describing how we moved, right? We're describing how we moved. And it's really critical that you start with your pre-image, all right? Remember, this is the image and this is the pre-image. So you have to start with the one that does not have primes. All right, you have to start with the one that does not have primes. So 
Um, I'm going to give you a second to practice this one. Okay, practice it, then we'll go over it. All right, so for this one, we're going to go in the X direction first. This is our image. It doesn't have a prime. This is our image. You can pick any points. I like to pick P because it's kind of not in this mess up here, right? So I'm going to pick P. So I need to go one, two, three, four left. So that's in the negative four direction. And then I need to go up two. So that's a positive two. So that's our rule, x minus four, y plus two. Um, our next one, we wanna describe the translation that maps the pre-image onto its image using coordinate notation. So we always, always, always wanna start with x, y. And then we're gonna do our arrow. And we always start with an x and a y, and then we have to figure out how it moved, right? So which one's your image and which one's your pre-image? Where are we starting? We're starting here. So take a second, figure out how it moved. How did it move? All right, so we need to go one to the right, and then we are going down seven. So that's a negative seven. All right, we went one to the right and down seven. So same thing with this one. Which one is your image? Which one is your pre-image? Pick a point. All right, I'm going to pick W. This is our pre-image. So I need to go one, two, three, four. So that's a negative four. And then I am going one, two, three down, so that's a negative three. So that is our rule. Um, if you are interested, the extra practice problems, also upside down, on the back page, all right? So these are extra practice problems for uh, doing a translation. And then this one is extra practice problems for uh, the coordinate notation, so describing the translation. Um, email me if you have questions.